Welcome to this section of the course where we're going to talk about trig identities. And in the, in the largest sense, trig identities are basically um, formulas or relations that you can write down that kind of relate uh, some of the trig functions to other trig functions. For instance, we've been talking about the uh, little rainbow that we would draw on the board that would tell us how to write secant in terms of some other trig function or cotangent, for instance, in, in terms of a tangent function. That was the simplest form of what we call a trig identity. And the, really the main thing that they're used for is um, to let you simplify expressions. So you kind of put those identities in your toolbox, your math mathematical toolbox, and you just pull them out to um, be able to use them whenever it helps you to simplify a problem. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about identities. We're not going to cover all of the trig identities uh, by any stretch of the imagination. There, there are literally hundreds of them. Um, but what we can do is, is kind of talk uh, generality. So if you recall, we wrote you know, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. And we wrote those down. And I taught you that if you kind of draw a little rainbow here, you'll be able to write uh, for instance, cotangent is 1 over tangent, secant is 1 over cosine, etc. Um, and those are actually, those are actually trig identities. So let's go ahead and write them down, and we'll use them here in a minute um, to do some simplification. So for instance, cotangent was equal to 1 over tangent. That was one of them we wrote down. Secant was 1 over cosine. That was another one we wrote down. And cosecant was 1 over sine. And we wrote that down. Okay, So these are identities. What it's telling me is I can write a cotangent in terms of some expression of a tangent. It just so happens it's fairly simple. It's just 1 over tangent. Here I can write a secant in terms of a cosine and a cosecant in terms of a sine. I've given you this nice tool to help you remember these here. Um, let's go ahead and talk about one of the most powerful trig identities um, around. Actually, it's one of the only ones that I have committed to memory. And that's the following. This is another trig identity. Um, what it means is sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. This is um, very, very important and um, you'll see it all over the place and you'll use it a lot too. First, let me explain what do I mean by this term sine squared of theta. For instance, what this would mean is if you take the sine of some angle theta and then whatever that number turns out to be, you square it. That's what it means when you say sine squared of theta. You're not squaring the theta. What you're doing is you, you're operating on the theta and you're, you're taking the sine of it and then whatever this number happens to be, then you square it. Let me briefly explain where this identity comes from and uh, I think it'll, it'll be kind of enlightening. Remember the unit circle that we had? We've been talking about that all day, really. Um, you have a unit circle. It's, it's radius 1. Okay, That's why it's called a unit circle. And we normally draw it kind of like this. My circle's not perfect, but you see what, what the main point is. It's a circle. It's a radius 1. Okay. If you pick some random, some random angle here, like this, this angle would be, let's call it theta. That's, after all, what we've been talking about. And then if we want to find the sine and the cosine of this guy, you know, we had been talking about is you take the projection down here like this. And then what we've been really saying, really in the entire class, is this measure right here is called the sine of theta. That's to, by definition what the sine of theta is. 